Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie the Z Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury three three three. And this next match will be again between R. This next match will be between R three and Anarchid on the brand new Edensonia, because Moose is loose went loose on the map, and it looks super pretty. We put all the detailed texturing and normal mapping stuff, and some specularity. It's slightly shiny, and it looks so cool. It looks like sand. It actually looks like a beach. Ah, no, forget casting. I'm just going to sit here for a while. So pretty. Just look at the waves. And accidentally go into water. Okay, let's not drown. So, R3 going for the Cloaky Butt Factory. Anarchid going as well for Cloaky Butt Factory. So, and no, I'm not on drugs. It's just, it looks nice. I really like it when maps look pretty. When maps have all the different detail and normal and specular texturing and such that actually makes it look like a realish place or more real place or at least more detailed because boy does it ever make a difference to the overall aesthetics of the game to have a map with proper with really well fleshed out details like okay if you look too closely it does get a little bit too pixelated but overall what moose's loose did to this map is abs is amazing it it really makes the map shine. And it's not like the map was a bad map to begin with. It was a looker to begin with, and Moose's Loose made it even better. So good job. Anyhow, Anarchid going for a couple Glaives with a couple Glaives coming out from R3 as well. Both players, two Glaives, Worker, and then more Glaives. Though Anarchid going pretty slowly for Warrior. R3 going for a Rapid Warrior, not even going for extra Glaives. Two Glaives into Warrior, so R3 does not want to play the Raider game. They want to play the Counter Raider game. Or rather, just the Riot game. They want to stop Raiders completely. Like, forget it. No Raiders. You're gun. You're done. Just play other things. <laughs> and you're actually... Okay. <laughs> Kingstead pointing out that as a Canadian, I don't see beaches that often. Okay, for one thing, I actually live in Vancouver, so there are beaches relatively close. But beaches like this? No. No, this is... This is like Hawaii. And I haven't been to Hawaii in about 12 years. So... I kind of miss this. Anarchid actually pretty, doing pretty well for energy. They're he setting up... Hey, wind gens! Wind generators are off the bat. Although it's 0.2 to 2.5. This is actually one of the worst maps for worst maps for wind gens. But Anarchid's got a relatively stable power economy with their solar collectors as well. So it should be fine. It's just... I've gone on about wind gens the last two games, and now all of a sudden a player makes them, and it's a map where, yeah, it works to make them. It's just not the best spot to make them in, because they're, it's not the most... Actually, this, this map in general does not pay off well for wind. Not a particularly windy map from the looks of it, or at least not a particularly elevated map. Anyway, R3 with a much healthier metal economy, they do need to get their power up rather quickly, as Anarchid is harassing the southwest side of the map and will basically open them up completely. There's only one more defender left, and the Glaives are not going towards it. They're going towards the southwest. There's nothing here. All the Conjurer can do is hide in the bushes and hope for the best. And I would, be, I would not be surprised if Anarchid was able to su suss out where R3's con Conjurer went, assuming that they figured that they actually went over into the trees and not into the water or something. And given that there was a partially built metal extractor, it kind of hints that the conjurer is here somewhere. R3 should probably get out of there, in fact. Probably should move that conjurer away from the trees. But it looks like Anarchid's not going to be searching that hard. So at this point, Anarchid satisfied that they've gotten rid of that southwest expansion. Not realizing R3 is still built over to the little plateau area to the northeast. So ultimately, R3 is ahead metal-wise. Even after losing the two metal extractors, they did not lose the conjurer. That is the most important thing. This conjurer is still here. Rebuilding can happen immediately. Which is why I always, always, always go on about how it's really important, if not absolutely the most important thing, to kill the workers rather than killing the economy structures they would make. And now this glaive is actually going exactly to the right spot the Conjurer's in. That Conjurer is dead. Anarchid finally able to get rid of them. But R3 still ahead economically. They need to stop excessing. I'm sorry, stream chat. People were complaining about in stream chat about how this was becoming the excess bitch, excess bishin matches because every game had massive amounts of excess, and R3 continuing that trend. Seriously, why do they not have... Okay, there's the Conjurer, which hopefully will be used to help build the factory up. 
but it's currently not being used at all. In fact, it's currently going out from the looks of it to replace its fallen compatriot over in the northwest or southwest side of the map. Now, Anarchid, on the other hand, expanding relatively healthily, does have a caretaker being built up in their main base next to their factory, so they're going to have no problems avoiding excess for the next 10 metal or so. But, unfortunately, the same cannot be said for R3. They have finally stopped accessing to an extent, but they need more energy. Like, they're they're trying to make do with only eight solar plants, and that's not going to work. Like, they need far more than that. They need at least three more, ideally six to eight more. But, of course, they're going to be building more metal, too, so just keep building solar plants. Why is it so... I don't know. I realize it's a thing. I make the mistake, too. It's not just these players. It's sometimes hard to remember to build power plants. It's just really important, especially against someone like Anarchid. Anyway, R3 is now losing that southeast side of the map. Looks like they did indeed lose the Conjurer. So that southeast side taking a lot of damage. Not losing the Metal Extractors, though. So while it will be difficult to set up defenses by the Metal Extractors for further Scythe attacks, and actually to rebuild that one Metal Extractor that did go down by the Scythe, it's not a huge loss. The problem, like I said, is more that R3 does not have much power infrastructure. The energy infrastructure is the biggest thing they need to build immediately. They can't even, like, before building more metal extractors. And a proxy light vehicle factory as well coming out from R3, which they do not have the money for. At the same time, Anarchid is building up a gunship plant, and Anarchid, I should point out as well, also having a bit of a problem with their own energy economy. Mostly, there's, the wind generators have died down a bit. Not much, but a bit. However, as long as they build a couple more solar plants, they're nowhere near accessing at this point. They had a lot of energy storage to work with, so they're now going to run into problems. Ideally, they just send one of their conjurers over here to start reclaiming trees, and that would do the trick. I mean, that is the thing on this map, is that if your energy is not doing well, there are trees. You can reclaim them. Like, just the amount of energy you get from reclaiming that is fairly impressive. So I don't understand why it is that they're not playing that as much. But, oh well. So it goes, I guess. At any rate, Anarchid finally finishing up these metal extractors over to the southeast. While R3 is... What are they... Ah, there we go. Finally building some power. That's that's what they've been needing this entire game, is some metal... Is some en no, sorry, energy. Energy! They had plenty of metal. They have way too much metal. But now Anarchid setting up with the Banshees coming in to harass. I don't know how much R3 is going to be able to deal with this. I mean, I was assuming that this was going to be a bit more even, because R3 is actually apparently a 1900 LO player. But I guess these things happen. They must not have played for a while. I'm assuming they're, they're rusty. But I see their name a lot around, so I'm not really sure who they are. I was curious who they were. And, oh, for those wondering, minimum wind on the high ground plateaus here is 0.5. So, that's... For those of you who are slightly curious about that, that is what it is. And R3 really get running into a bit of a problem production-wise. They need they need caretakers, or they need more conjurers helping out the factories. That's the biggest thing. Or at least, you know, rebuild the this light vehicle factory. As long as they have both, they're going to be able to spend their metal. The problem is that they excess so much metal earlier on, and Anarchid's now ahead economically, and there's no easy way for R3 to deal with that. Like, they don't have a lot of units in place to harass this. There are a bunch of warriors roaming around the map for Anarchid, so R3's glaives just can't easily go around the map. There's no easy way that R3 can rush in, take out a few metal extractors. They're gonna try, they're gonna fail, but they're gonna try. At least they're gonna scout things out. If nothing else. Actually, oh wow! Oh, that was... That glaive almost got lucky. If, if that conjurer hadn't been moved, that would have been actually not terrible like it would have been one once again one of those things where following up would have been stronger than the initial attack also didn't manage to kill yet another conjurer r3 does not seem to be prioritizing conjurers like i'm serious when i say killing conjurers or killing workers is the most important thing although at this stage in the game it's a little bit less important because there's like how many conjurers does anarchy have looks like they have about five yeah those appear to all be anarchids so at this point, Anarchid does have some spare conjurers. If they lose them, it's not as big of a deal. But it's still painful. You still don't want to lose workers. 
So that's the thing is there's not really much reason to go for a half-built metal extractor when you can kill the conjurer that would be building it. That's my point. R3, however, has managed to get their economy in order eventually. They do have enough production that they aren't accessing. They have an economy, well, metal economy that's 10 below Anarchy. They still need to get a few more metal extractors, but they're rebuilding, so... Well, they're trying to rebuild. They're not actually effectively rebuilding. Unfortunately for them, they are unable to easily rebuild. That being said, though, the Raptors coming in here with the Zeus's is going to be a pain. I mean, Anarchy's going to actually have to deal with this. Problem, however, is that Anarchy already has the tools to deal with this, and then some, with the Banshees coming in here over by their main base, getting rid of the Cloakybot factory in short order. Zeus doing what it can, but unfortunately, it's not particularly accurate. Lightning apparently is not as fast as we had once thought. Down goes the Clickybot Factory, down goes the Zeus that was valiantly defending the main base, or valiantly attempting to defend the main base, and I think down goes the game with that, but there is this Light Vehicle Factory, and that is still producing units. And the Commander as well, which is also, wow, level 5. The armor, build power, increased damage, a bunch of shotguns, and a drone. And some range increases too. I mean, I guess that's R3's big ace in the hole there, is send out your Commander. Just go! Commander, out there, killing everything. Maybe. I mean, shotguns against Banshees is really powerful, so if the Banshees attack the Commander, that'll be death for the Banshees. Problem, however, is that R3 has a quarter of the economy of Anarchy. Well, a third of the economy of Anarchid. So, good luck with that. Like, I don't really know how that's going to pan out. I mean, really, it does not seem like there's any easy way that R3 can get out of this. Anarchids just got the Banshees everywhere. They've pretty much wrecked all the faces. And Scythe decided to commit suicide unproductively. As the Zeus is... Yeah, they're just going to get rid of you. Oh well. It tried. It found the Zeus's at any rate. It got a little too cocky and paid for it with its life. As it so happens from time to time. And for those of you wondering about the choice of matches, yeah, I I picked them all in advance of the stream. So if yeah, if someone plays a match during the stream, I won't catch it because I've already picked the matches. And that's I mean, I don't know. I If someone wants to say, "Hey, I I'm going to do a live series with like between me and this other person. We're going to do like a first to 3 or something on the time of your stream." If you told me that, I'd be really happy, because then I could cast that live, and that'd be awesome. So yeah, if you want to, like, play during the stream, or have, like, live matches cast during the stream, just tell me. Just organize with someone to do, like, a first to two, first to three, or something like that, and I will gladly cast that. Anyway, R3 is, looks like they're gonna be finished off here as, yeah, the Glaives get rid of the Geoplant, which kills R3's energy economy, leaving it entirely their commander. And once the Banshees get in, actually the Banshees aren't going to have much chance. The Scythes are going to be the real tool here. They're going to be the, the thing that should be able to deal with stuff, sort of, maybe. Actually, even then, not really. Mm, half a dozen warriors should do the trick. Yeah, half a dozen warriors should probably, especially with R3's commander going forward. If R3 loses their commander, that's game. There's no way R3's going to get back from that. However, R3 losing their commander is also going to be difficult. Or they just give up. That works too. Anyway, what was the excess? 1,500. Which is actually the lowest excess that the most accessing player has accessed in this day. In, in this set of exhibition matches I've casted. So, well done R3. You accessed less than everyone else today. Or at least everyone who accessed the most in their games. Of the games that I casted. Which was actually from games over the last three days or so. At any rate... Good job there. But yeah, R3 kind of lost on account of not really building up as much as they needed to. They just didn't get their energy as much as they needed to. They didn't get their build power as much as they needed to. They didn't get enough units in play. I don't know about the commander thing. I mean, that's a way of getting rid of excess metal. If you happen to be excessing metal and you can't easily get your build power up, but you have the energy, yeah, upgrading your commander is not a bad idea. 
not a great idea, but at least you're not excessing. <laughs> so, next match is going to be between... Who's it going to be? It's actually going to be the last match for tonight, too, which will be between Anarchid and Hokomoko on Living Lands. So that'll be up in a couple moments. Stay tuned.